there and welcome to Slay Tuned again. Uh, today is day three of my Spooktober videos and I have another great supernatural-esque murder mystery. And not just any murder mystery, a murder solved after the death of someone by the victim himself. One of Australia's most infamous law stories called Fisher's Ghost. So this murder happened in the 1820s in Australia, Campbelltown, in New South Wales. Englishman Frederick Fisher was a convict who was actually sent to Australia for fraud. Although he didn't spend long in prison because shortly after, there are two sources to this that say he fraudulently created papers upon his release. But I have found other sources that say he was released on condition that he would go to church every Sunday and was given land. But I guess both actually could tie in with each other. He could have fraudulently made his papers and then they gave him land and said, well, make sure you go to church. Frederick Fisher was actually given quite a substantial amount of land and his neighbour, George Worrell, was actually a fellow convict himself. Once again, some of the sources conflict a little here, but some sources say that at some point, Fisher had a carpenter working on his land. He wasn't happy with the quality that he was doing and a fight broke out. In self-defence, he stabbed the carpenter and was sent back to prison for six months. To keep hold of his land, he let Worrell, his neighbour, look after his land for him until he returned. Some sources completely omit this information. But what we do know is on June 17th in 1826, Frederick Fisher went missing. Worrell, his neighbour, had told the town that Fisher had returned back to England with no intention of returning and that the land had been signed over to him. Apparently Worrell was in some financial trouble. So it's no surprise that he started to sell off Fisher's land piece by piece. A little later on, a respectable gentleman by the name of John Farrell was walking home when he crossed a bridge and upon his surprise he sees Fisher sitting on the rail. Except Fisher doesn't look very well. He claims he looks pale and has a gash on his head. He says to him, I thought you were in London. And Fisher does not reply but simply points to the creek behind him and then disappears. John Farrell was pretty shaken up and ran to the closest pub for a drink. He then, once calm, told everyone and the next day they sent out a search party to the creek, especially where Fisher pointed. And in that area, in a shallow grave, they found Fisher's body. It was clear that he had been beaten and on his head was a lethal wound. Because Worrell had been telling everyone he had gone to London and all of a sudden became in possession of Fisher's land, he was the immediate suspect. He was tried and found guilty and then hung. I personally loved this story because it is fact these people did exist but I think one of the reasons why I found slightly conflicting stories is because that's what happens when something becomes law. When stories become loved and shared as much as this one was I think stories now and again do change slightly over time but the consistent story is there. Worrell murdered Fisher and Fisher made sure that Worrell paid even after death. This story is so infamous now that in Campbelltown it is celebrated annually with the festival of Fisher's ghost. There is even a poem written about Fisher's ghost and a movie was made in the 1920s. All the links for my sources will be below including the poem if you want to read it but if you want to hear my attempt to read out the very long poem I will do that now because it fills out the video and I think it's really interesting because especially as a, a wannabe historian it's a piece of evidence in itself it tells the story of Fisher's ghost so here we go this was written in 2006 by Evan Snarl I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong now I've heard it said by skeptics that my tale is just that an old yarn about a ghost on a rail where I once sat. But I'll tell you what happened, and I know better than most, because I'm Frederick George James Fisher, well at least I'm his ghost. I travelled as a convict from Portsmouth to South Wales. It was mournful journey beneath the billowing sails. We never saw the sun before we arrived at the quay, and land was a glorious sight after six months at sea. Twenty-two hundred and seven days later I was free, 
Well, I had a ticket of leave, so as I, I was as free as could be. I was granted 30 acres and had had been released, on condition I go to church and report to the priest. I obeyed the rules explicitly for nigh on four years until I was taken down by one of my fellow peers. Bill Brooker was a carpenter doing some work for me, but I could see that work he'd done wasn't worth his fee. So when I gave him the money and I thought he was due, he attacked me with his chisel and I tried to run me through. I stabbed him in self-defence, but I was thrown in the clink. So I gave my neighbour George the authority in ink to farm my block like it was his own until I got out. I now know that was a bad idea because he was a lout. But while I was in the goal, he looked after my place well. He milked my Frisians and kept all my chucks fed for a spell. After my lag was over, on the way back to the scrub, I dropped in for a pint with the boys at the local pub. I was in a hurry. I could share only one drink with them. And when I left the pub, I walked into some real mayhem. As I crossed the rickety bridge, I was hit in the head. Then the cur beat me until I was well and truly dead. He bashed my head in with a post and then he buried me, up in the creek a muddy marsh where nobody would see me. Then I came back as a ghost to show a neighbouring mate, where my body was lying in its gruesome mangled state. I thought John Farley could do with the twenty quid reward, so I pointed out to him where my body had been stored. A copper came round and searched the creek and I had pointed too, and found my rotting corpse after the drying of the dew. And George had been spinning a yarn about me abroad, while I was up in the creek and his tail had me overawed. He reckoned I'd gone back to Mother England late one night, by sneaking on a board ship out of the governor's sight. But when the cops found my body, George Worrell's yarn was checked, and the cracks in his story made him the primary suspect. Then they locked him up, cause he was wearing my Daxon socks. He was hanged off the drop near Sydney Harbour at the rocks. Since George was executed, I've played pranks round the place, because I can cause tomfoolery without leaving a trace. But it's hard to chat with people when they all run away, and if you just calm down, I'd love to hear about your day. I switched the lights off in the town orchestra pit one night, and I'm really sorry the folks weren't supposed to get such a fright. In 1973, an old bridge rail from my creek was taken to the racetrack when I thought was pretty weak. So five times I washed out the Campbelltown picnic races by causing rain which put a dampener on airs and graces. My rail was moved and although it wasn't back in the mud, it was taken from the track so I stopped their race day flood. Now I try to chew the fat with some city folk because I like to share a mag and love to hear a joke. So you can see I'm a nice bloke who likes to just have fun and about the race I knew the horse you backed would never won. So if you want to see me, remember I'm here to stay. And if you want to come up and chat, I'd love to say good day. I love that poem. That makes me so happy to read, although it's about a gruesome, grisly, unfair murder. <laughs> and I apologise for any of the Australian slang that I definitely said wrong. <laughs> but yeah, that's the infamous Australian law story of Fisher's ghost. Once again... Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to stay tuned because there will be a video every single day for the rest of October. I was going to quickly try and do the maths, of which it is 28 more videos, but apparently I can't do maths that quickly in my head. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Please like and comment because it really helps out a growing channel. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.